happy sabbath everyone happy sabbath we are actually back i didn't know if i was gonna make it but i am back with another video on the book of proverbs and we are doing chapter two last time we saw verse chapter two verses one through verse ten and i'm hoping today we're gonna do the 11 to 22 and be done with that chapter so uh, well, let's actually um, get to the actual scenario. Verse 11. Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding, understanding shall keep thee. Uh, backdrop, you know, the, the book was, this chapter was about the benefit of wisdom. So when you have wisdom, discretion, meaning purpose, your intent, your thought, it shall preserve thee. Why? Because once once you have wisdom, certain things you're not going to do, and that's going to be a, a, a protection, in a sense, for you. Basically, once you have God, you got protection. Understanding shall keep thee. Yes, same thing. Understanding, you know, what is right from wrong, that will protect you, in a sense, and it will keep you from the evil's harm way. Yes, it might harm you <clears throat> it might harm you physically but doesn't mean it's going to touch your um your spirit so the physical component is not uh, an issue it's mostly the spiritual component verse 12 to deliver thee from the way of evil from the men that speaketh forward things actually forward things you see i haven't even read that verse yet and i already understood exactly what it means the discretion preserving thee and understanding keeping thee basically it's to deliver thee from the way of evil of the evil men from the men that speaketh forward things you know somebody who speaks forward things is stay away from that person why because whatever is coming out of the person's mouth is going to affect you mentally physiologically, spiritually, and my my force you to do certain things bodily as well. We know what forward means, right? Forward means perversity. Yes. So somebody who speaks in a perverse way, you know what that means? You've met people who sp who's been speaking to you perversely before. So don't don't be around somebody. Now, if you're supposed to be in that area and then things are happening, okay. But don't try to be friends with people that do this kind of stuff because there is no, there shouldn't be any, um, and not encounter, but interaction in a sense between light and darkness or friendship between good and evil, or light and darkness, in a sense. Um, so what that mean, mean that, uh, for the men that speaketh forward things who leave the path of unrighteousness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice to do evil and delight to do the forwardness of the wicked do you guys remember Psalm chapter 1 what it says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated at the, in the seat of the scornful. Right? So basically, in Proverbs chapter 2, right here, it is basically telling you everything that Psalms chapter 1 says not to do. Right? Basically, anyone who leaves who leave the path of, of, of uprightness, who wants to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the fraudness of the wicked, don't, basically, that would take you back to Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who does not, basically, leave the path of uprightness, who does not walk in the way of darkness, who does not rejoice to do evil, who does not delight in the fraudness of the wicked. That could be the, another Psalm chapter 1, in a sense, because that is very interesting. I, I didn't even think about Psalm chapter 1 until now that I'm reading this. 
whose ways are crooked or and they and forward in their path. So basically, um, let me give you guys a, 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 a story that works, that actually aligns with this perfectly fine. Genesis chapter 6. Remember that? Bible says, And it came to pass when men become to multiply on the face of the, on the, face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, and they took them wives, all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not thrive with men, for he also is the flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Right? Verse number 5. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was ev- only evil. How much? How long? Continually. Interesting. Proverbs chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 6 are basically working together here. Do, who, life lesson. L- do not leave the path of apartness. Don't walk in the ways of darkness. Don't rejoice to do evil. And do not delight in doing the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their path. That is basically what God saw in just chapter 6. That men's heart or mind were evil continually. If you don't understand, then I don't know what else I can help you understand. Verse 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, ooh, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Um, <sighs> let me say this something. Let me, let, me, let, me say, let me say something about um, this thing about strange women. Mm, you know how the Bible speaks about do not be unequally yoked, you know? And most of us all only look at it as, oh, if you are a, a Catholic, you should only marry a Catholic. If you are a Baptist, you should only marry a Baptist. If you are a Methodist, you should marry a Methodist. Me, of course, as a Seventh-day Adventist, oh, you should only marry a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't think that's what the Bible actually says when it says, do not be unequally yoked. Because I could marry a Seventh-day Adventist woman. And my life becomes like hell. And I marry a Catholic woman. And it's the most peaceful woman I, that, that could bring a lot more peace in my life. I don't think unequally yoke only means spiritually. Because there are many people in the same denomination, same religious background, who are unequally yoked. Like, or oh, bad. So, the... When you have understanding and you have discretion, that will help you look at women as a man or look at men as a woman in a way that would preserve you from going with the wrong person. So as a man, I would be able to discern, okay, this woman is is basically a walking trouble. There is no way I should even think about wanting to talk to that person. Run as far as possible, I would say to myself, the open veil TV. Run and do not turn back. Just like Lot. Run from Sodom and Gomorrah. Do not look back. Because, man, this, this is actually interesting. Who would have thought the book of Proverbs gave all this information for us to have a successful life? At least marriage and psychology. Uh, psychological aptitude. Man, who would have thought? Verse 17. Uh, of course, the, the strange woman, basically, verse 16, it's talking about the strange woman. And verse 17. What does that strange woman do? She forsaketh the guide of her youth and for, forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her... Ha- oh, uh, okay. You know, there are a lot of women who like to Oh, you know, I was raised in a in the Christian church, and I decided to leave because I didn't. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you something. Whenever you hear women say, "Oh, I grew up in the Christian church or some religious background, and I left," ask yourself, did that person ever have any relationship 
with God. Or oh, whoever was worshipping. Let's say he was worshipping Buddha or Hindu or what, I don't know, whatever they were worshipping. As, as a man, ask yourself, did that woman have a relationship with her God? If the answer is no, then you know there shouldn't be anything for you over there. Because she had forsaken she had forsaken the God of her youth. Who was supposed to be the God of her youth? God. And because she turned away from God, then what else can you do? Nothing. But run from her. Or if you're a woman, run from him. Why? For her house inclineth unto death and her path unto the dead. And I also think that also um, appropriates to women who are happy to hear that somebody is dead or somebody's wife or ex is dead because they didn't like that person. I think anybody who is happy with somebody dead is wicked. Period. No no strangers wicked to the highest level. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the path of life. Why? Because she, and of course that could also mean a church, meaning a woman in, in Bible prophecy also means a church. So it could be a literal woman, and we know how many men have had their lives wrecked because they were, they were with the wrong woman, either child support or either um, false allegation of grapes or SA or harassment, and the man's life is turned upside down from that moment. These women, yes, those are also the wicked women, but it could also be a church who is taking people away from the true God and having them worship the false god, that also is another woman, the church, meaning that. So none that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the path of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the path of the righteous, for the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall be made in it. Yes. So you realize at the end of the day, whether you were lied about, uh, whether somebody lied about you, at the end of the day, the truth comes out, and then, then yes, your reputation may have been destroyed, but then, once the truth comes out, everybody sees that wow, he he or she was the actual victim, and that other person was the perp- perpetrator, then your reputation goes through the galaxy, and that other person's Repetition is destroyed and nobody wants to mention that person's name at all because of the lie that was caught. And you know what happens? It is better to be whooped because of the truth than the lie. It always works. But guess what? The wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. What does that mean? You guys remember I just read to you the story of Noah earlier? Uh, What did happen? You see, the wicked, those that basically were outside of the ark, they were the wicked. Okay, disclaimer. Um, To everybody listening, when the Bible says wicked, it doesn't necessarily mean you were... uh, adulterer, you are a murderer, a grape, the grapeist, or a sex offender, or an assassin, or any of that. No, nah, it doesn't mean any of that. Unbelievers are wicked people. The first people that are not entering heaven are called unbelievers. Not even the murderers or that. Unbelievers. When the Bible speaks of wicked, it means anybody who does not do God's will. So if being an unbeliever is that part of it, then you are a wicked person just because you are an unbeliever. Because you will not do God's will. That's that's the basic principle of it. And 
the transgressors shall be rooted out. Who, what, is, what, what, is, what does it mean to transgress? It means to, oh, um, what is sin is the transgression of the law. Yes, it's not only God's law. Any law, in, and also in the human term, that are in accordance to God's law, if you break it, you are a transgressor as well. But those that do God's will, the perfect ones, they shall remain. So anybody who live according to Psalm chapter 1, they shall remain. Anybody who, will go, who live like Noah, they shall remain. Anyone that, anyone that lived like that lives like Lot, Elijah, David, or Elijah, David, like Job, Joseph, Jesus, they shall remain. Again, guys, food for thought.